I give to you Susan Wagle. God bless you. Can you hear me out back? Can you hear out there? Wave your hands if you can hear. All right. Well, thank you, Charlie, for introducing me. As Charlie stated, I'm not only a state senator, I'm a small business owner, but the most important role I've had in my life is that of being a mother to four young children. Actually, they're all grown now. My youngest is a senior in high school, and he's about to go off to college, and my husband and I will be empty nesters. But when I raised my children, after learning how my grandparents came to America from a Europe, seeking freedom, seeking opportunity, and seeking prosperity, how they worked hard and they built wealth, and they even built enough wealth that they were not only able to provide for their family, but they were able to send money back home to Germany and Italy and support their families in Europe. And after seeing how my parents followed that heritage, how they learned from their ancestors, how they worked hard, they saved their money, and they accumulated wealth, and they provided a good living for six of us children. I was the second born of six children. And so after being raised in that environment, when it came time for me to have a family, I told every one of my children, dream big. I told them that in America, you can become any person you want to be. I told them if you work hard, if you get a good education, I told them that this is the land of opportunity. This is a place where a pauper can raise himself up by his own bootstraps. This is a place where people have taken simple labor jobs, like mowing lawns or roofing homes or gardening, and they've grown those small businesses into very large businesses. And this is a country where you can start small, and you can grow your business, and you can prosper and have wealth and build wealth. A little windy up here. Yeah. I taught my children you could work, you could save your money, make bigger investments, and if you operate in an ethical manner, if you're honest and if you're trustworthy, if you serve others, you will be rewarded. But now, in just the last few months, the dream that I tried to instill in my children has been taken away from them. I am here because I am just as angry as you are. I am here because the growth of government in just a matter of a few months is so rapid and is multiplying so fast that it's going to choke the recovery of our country. Government spending is growing at unbelievable, incredibly fast rates. Just last year, we were talking in terms of billions of dollars. But now, Washington is paying for new spending by racking up trillions of dollars in debt to foreign investors and printing trillions of dollars in new money. No. And when this economy begins to turn around, that debt is going to result in soaring inflation that will batter families and will batter small businesses and choke the very recovery that we are all now working towards. This Congress is killing job growth. With unemployment rising, we need to make it more attractive for businesses to hire workers. But high taxes, which is the solution of this Congress, is going to make it harder for businesses to free up cash to grow and to make new hires. The future inflation that is being created right now by these irresponsible borrow and spend policies being enacted in DC will mean that the return of a strong employment market that reduces unemployment to low levels could be years from now instead of just around the corner. The time has come to retake our nation and restore our fundamental American free market values. That's right. We agree. That may 
means lowering taxes and simplifying our tax code. Our tax code is so complex and it's so convoluted, con convoluted that it's not unusual for two IRS auditors to draw different conclusions from the same tax return. It also means that we must return to self-responsibility. Where businesses and individuals cannot make irresponsible choices like borrowing for a home they could never hope to afford, and then turning to Washington and to responsible taxpayers like you for a bailout. That means standing up to the special interests and cutting the fat and the pork from the budget so taxpayers pay for core critical services and not for fluff that is not needed to keep our country safe and strong. Folks, it's time for Washington to go back to overseeing the market rather than manipulating the market. With big bailouts and de facto government control of some major banks and some major corporations, they are picking winners and they are picking losers that were once involved in free markets. The money to pay for new government programs, the pork, the waste, and the bailouts come from taxpayers like you who are here today. We cannot afford it. It is going to bankrupt not only this generation, but generations to come. If the mortgage crisis, and the banking crisis, and the automakers crisis, and all the other crises proved that you cannot simply borrow endlessly to achieve prosperity, why would anyone in Washington think that government can borrow to bring us back to a strong economy? It doesn't make sense. Those of you who have come here today have a strong message. We cannot afford these misguided and bloated programs. Our children and our grandchildren should not be burdened with paying for them with interest paid to foreign lenders. These policies are going to slow down any economic recovery. They will keep workers on the unemployment line and they will destroy the free markets that have been the bedrock of America's strength. Yeah. Today we stand here and we reject excessive taxation from Washington, D.C. Yeah. Just as our forefathers did in 1773 at the Tea Party in Boston. And just like the activists at the Tea Party in 1773 wanted their voices heard in London, so we want our voice to be heard in Washington today. Thank you for being here. Please stand in solidarity, stand with one voice, stand united and tell Washington enough is enough. Thank you, Susan, and thanks to 